Suspense. Autolite and its 96,000 dealers present Mr. Victor Mature in Momentum, a suspense play produced and edited by William Spear. Say, Hap. Yes, Harlow? This morning I was telling a cantankerous cartoon of a car it would run better with Autolite resistor spark plugs when it reared up on its differential and replied, what do you think I'm waiting for? <laughs> A talking car. Well, every bright buggy knows that Autolite resistor spark plugs mean a smoother idle and better engine performance on leaner gas mixtures. Why, that's common knowledge among cars. Right, you are, Hap. Autolite resistor spark plugs have 200% longer electrode life. And they cut down on spark plug interference with radio and television, too. Why, millions are in use. Backed by the engineering know-how of Autolite, Wide Gap Autolite resistor spark plugs are sure top all-round spark plug performance. Get Autolite resistor spark plugs. Remember, you're always right with Autolite. And now, with momentum and with the performance of Victor Mature, Autolite hopes once again to keep you in suspense. I looked just like any other guy standing on a platform waiting for a train at night. The other people walking up and down here waiting for their train, they might look and they might not. Just a guy waiting for a train, waiting to say goodbye to New York. They don't know I'm different. It's starting to snow. They think the way I'm clutching my coat collar together is because I'm cold. They don't know I've got a bullet in my neck. Yeah. This is some of that bad trouble my wife always is telling me I'm going to get myself in. Bad trouble. All those people dying on account of it, like a snowball when it starts rolling itself up, gathering, what is it, momentum. Well, in another 20 minutes, her train will be here, and I'll meet her, and we'll be on our way to San Francisco, and things will be different. Things will be a lot different. I never thought today was going to be like this. Since noon today, it's already lasted a couple million years. A couple of million years. the idea? Oh, Dick, get up. It's noon. Twelve Ooh. o'clock and you haven't even gotten out of bed yet. What? Twelve noon? Hey, you're going to be late for work. I'm home on my lunch hour. I thought you'd do something like this. Sleeping all day. I was up late last night. Shooting pool. All right, all right. A guy's got to have some relaxation. You've been relaxing for six months. You haven't even tried to get a job. Oh, nuts. Nobody's out of work these days. Look, I told you, it's got to be the right thing, that's all. I don't want to take the first stinking job that comes along. Or do you want me to go on supporting you? You didn't have to say that. Well, everybody's saying. The people downstairs, the landlord, everybody. I didn't have my little job. How could we eat? So everybody's saying you're supporting me, is that it? Well, isn't it? I'll show them. I'll show them all. Who are they with their cheap little ideas and two-bit jobs? You don't have to work like a slave to make a living. Oh, Dick... When you talk, I... Sometimes I'm afraid you're going to get in trouble. The guy's a little down on his luck, and all of a sudden, little wifey's a martyr. She has to go out and work. Dick, please. That's it, isn't it? You're a martyr. No, darling, I didn't say that at all. Oh, yes, you did. Yes, you did. Dick, when I get home from work tonight, we're going to have to find a place to live. Now, this place isn't good enough for you, huh? No, darling. This is our last day. We're being evicted. Hmm? Says who? The landlord stopped me this morning. We owe him three months' rent. I simply haven't got it. Well, we have until tomorrow morning. Well, listen, nobody throws Dick Payne out of his own place. I'll try to get home early and find a hotel, maybe. Wait a minute. Hmm? Don't bother. I'll get some dough. I know just where. Mr. Burroughs. Oh, Dick, you're not going to Mr. Burroughs. Why not? He owes it to me. He's making money out of my invention, isn't oh, he? Dick, you know that when you worked for Mr. Burroughs, you were paid for everything you did. Yeah, if you call a couple of bucks a week pay. Burroughs is making a lot of dough in that stinking shop just because of my invention. But he's not that way. I work for him, too, remember? Then you ought to know how he cheated me. Yeah, that's what he did. He cheated me. You know Mr. Burroughs isn't that kind of man. The firm isn't run that way. If you had anything Go coming... ahead, go ahead. That's right. Stick up for that shyster who robbed your own husband. I'm going over and see him today for a showdown. Oh, Dick, please don't go over there. Don't make any trouble. We need dough, don't we? We're being evicted, aren't we? 
Well, I'm going to show you a little action. I'm going out and get her some dough. You know Mr. Burroughs won't listen to anything so foolish. He'll listen to me and he'll pay too plenty. <laughs> oh, darling, no, no. What are you crying please. about? Look, when I get that dough, you won't have to support me anymore. <laughs> Cut it out. Go on back to work. I'm going to lie here a couple of minutes and figure this out. Go on, go on. I guess I was pretty sore when I talked to her like that. But it made me mad. You know, like one of those things leads to another and the whole thing gets going like momentum. And by the time I cooled off, I was up in the Bronx where Burroughs has his little office and machine shop in back. I phoned from a drugstore on 192nd Street. And the girl said there'd be a lot of people there all afternoon. So I killed time with a double feature. But I was back there at 6.30 just after dark. And I was mad again thinking about the eviction and all. There was a light in his office, so I got around the side street. And I tried to see what was going on. The blinds were down over the window, but there was enough space for me to see the part of the room. Someone was in there with me. I couldn't see who it was. They were just shaking hands. Well, good night. Don't you worry about it anymore. Good night. I waited right there by the window until whoever it was had gone. Then I walked around and up to the door. But I didn't have to knock. Oh, Good evening, uh, Mr. Burroughs. I was just leaving you. You want to see me about something? Yeah. Uh, yes, sir, I do. Well, all right, come in, come in. It's chilly out tonight. Feels like snow, maybe. Well, sit down, sit down. Thanks. Now what? Well, I I used to work here in the shop once. I quit six months ago. Remember me, Dick Payne? I most certainly do remember you, Payne. Yeah. Married the best secretary I ever had. Yeah, Pauline, a wonderful girl. I think so. I'm sure you appreciate that. She's a very fine girl. Yeah, she's all right. How are things with you and Pauline? Good. Good. Want to come back to work, Payne? No, no, that isn't what I came to see you about. It's about that lug wrench you're still using in the shops, the one with the long side screw. Yeah, what about it? I, uh, I invented it, Mr. Burroughs. Oh, really? I thought Tim Riley worked that out. Well, Tim worked on it, but uh, it was me who figured out how to set that thumb screw. Hasn't the thumb screw always been set that way? Not high on the wrench, no. Oh, and I see. Since I figured it out while I was here, and since you're using it, uh, well, I think I ought to be paid for it. I worked on it a long time. Payne, I just don't believe this, frankly. Tim Riley's been my foreman for 12 years. I know him pretty well. He'd have been the first to tell me if you'd contributed anything to a perfecting that wrench. Well, uh, he wanted all the credit himself. No, 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 Payne. It's not a matter of credit or money or anything else. Now, look here, Mr. Bur. Look here, Burroughs. I'm not going to be cheated oh, out of anything. stop it, Payne. I'm not obligated to you in any way. Look, you're still using the wrench, aren't you? I don't want to argue with you, and I don't want to be bothered with you. If it weren't for Pauline and the respect I have for her, I wouldn't even listen to you. I told her just the Let's other... leave her out of this, huh? She's my wife. Unfortunately for her... You know, Payne, I expected you to try something like this, and I'm ready for it. Yeah, well, where's my dough? Here. I want you to sign this. Here. What is it? A release. Although I don't owe you anything, for Mrs. Payne's sake, I'm giving you some money, because I, I know you both need it. This release will be my receipt. It'll ensure me against you bothering me about this again. Yeah? Go ahead, sign it. Where's the dough? Where's the dough? How much? Two hundred dollars? Well, why didn't you say so? I... Oh, no, you don't, wise guy. I want more than that. Look, if it's big enough to make me sign a release, it's big enough to bring in a lot more dough. Get out of here, Payne. Get out of and here. And who's going to make me? I'm smaller than you, Payne, but so help me, I'll throw you out myself. You're a no good worthless... Cut that! How Pauline could ever have seen Look, anything... Look, I told you to leave her out of this, did now I? get out of here before Give me my I dough! Really my... Get out of here! Oh, no, you don't, you... No! She don't like that, huh? Well, try this! Oh! All right, now. All right, now, Mr. Burroughs. Come on, Mr. Burroughs. I didn't mean to... Mr. Burroughs! You see, it was just one of those days again. He said something, and I said something, and it all piles up like a snowball. The first thing somebody gets, hurt. 
If he'd listened to reason and... Well, if he'd have just listened to reason, he'd be alive now. When I felt his pulse, there was nothing. I opened his coat to feel his heart. And that's when a black shiny billfold fell out. It was crammed with money. My money. Autolite is bringing you Mr. Victor Mature in Momentum, tonight's production in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. Hey, Hap, what's the book you have there? Just a story I'm reading, Harlow. Ruggles of Red Gap. Really? Say, uh, maybe you'd be interested in my life story, Wilcox of Wide Gap. Wilcox of Wide Gap? Mm Mm-hmm. It's all about my sterling and sensational success selling Wide Gap Autolite resistor spark plugs. Sensational success? You? Certainly. Didn't you know that over 20 million Wide Gap Autolite resistor spark plugs have been sold? And small wonder, who can resist having a set of Wide Gap Autolite resistor spark plugs installed in his car... When I tell them these wide gap whizzes mean smoother engine idle, better performance on leaner gas mixtures, actual gas savings. Why everybody goes for Autolite resistor spark plugs with the exclusive built-in 10,000 ohm Autolite resistor. You get smoother, faster, easier starts in cold temperatures, 200% longer electrode life, reduced spark plug interference with radio and television reception. So friends, see your neighborhood Autolite spark plug dealer and have him install a set of the famous Wide Gap Autolite resistor spark plugs in your car. Remember, you're always right with Autolite. And now, Autolite brings back to our Hollywood soundstage Victor Mature in Momentum, a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. 11.50. The train will just be pulling out of Grand Central now. It'll be here in ten minutes, twelve o'clock. It won't be long now. Another ten minutes, I'll be safe on that train with Polly. And all of this will be over. I'll make it. Nothing's going to stop me. Nothing. Not even this bullet. He started it all, Mr. Burroughs. And then the whole thing got going. Momentum. I didn't mean to kill him. I I just went there to get my money. the, The money he owed me for using my invention. But nobody saw me do it, and I I got out of there. All I wanted to do was get home to Pauline. But first I had to stop somewhere and get a drink. I needed it bad. I found a little place on 3rd Avenue, 60-something. It was empty except for the bartender. Hello. Hello. Business is kind of slow tonight, huh? Big television shows don't start until 8. Well, it'd be. I'd like some whiskey. Just whiskey. Just whiskey and whiskey it is, mister. Yeah. Chase him? No. Give me another one. Sure. <sighs> kind of dry, huh? Yeah, yeah. Another one? No, no, no. That's enough, thanks. That's a dollar twenty. One twenty? Huh. That's no problem. Just take it out of... Yep. Oh. Something wrong, buddy? Oh, no, 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 no. I, I changed my mind. Yeah, uh, what about? I think I'll have another drink. Yeah, give me another one. Uh, only make it a double this time. Sure. Want to pay me for the other two first? I'll pay you when I'm finished. House rule. Huh? Every two drinks we always collect in this place. That way, in case anybody tries to run out in a tab, which they don't generally do, because I don't like things like that. We don't lose much if they make it. Just a minute. You don't think that Which I'm Which they to... don't generally do. Look, I'm not trying to beat you out of anything. I, I got money. Sure you have. But you know, there's some guys around this town you just can't tell about. What's the matter? I, I, I feel a little sick. Where, where, where's the watchman? Door right back there behind a the cigarette machine. Want to pay me now? I'll, uh, I'll be right back. Just my luck. The drinks were more than the change I had in my pocket. That meant I had to break one of those bills I took from Burroughs. They were all fifties and hundreds. I couldn't take a chance on that bartender. He might think it was funny and remember and tell the police. I got panicky. It was another one of those snowballing things. I had to get out of that place. In the washroom, there was a window that led off to the alley. 
I just raised it, and it was climbing up on the sill when the bartender walked in. He was carrying a gun. All right, wise guy. I thought you'd try something like this. Come on, get off of that ledge. Look, I was only opening the window to get some air yeah, in here. Yeah, sure. Tell it to the cops. I'll pay you. Look, I'll pay you anything you want. Uh, deadbeat. I spotted you the minute you walked in the joint. I can spot him a while off. Now, come on, get moving. No. Hey, let go Look, of my I, arm, you crazy you, fool. Tell me. You might get scared. Let go of me. You. Uh, you crazy. I stood there with the gun in my hand. I didn't mean to hurt him either. But he tried to turn me over to the police for nothing. I hit him in the leg. He was out cold. I didn't know what to do. I I didn't dare leave the gun. I I just didn't know what to do. Finally, I thought I heard somebody coming in the front. I found the back door and ran until I was out of breath. I went up the stairs of our apartment house two at a time. And by the time I got inside my door, I thought my knees were going to buckle. But I had the safe feeling that a guy's own place gives him, you know, no matter how stinking it is. Pauline was cooking supper. Dick? Oh, Dick, hello. Liver and onions again? I heard you come in, Dick. I'm glad you're home. Liver and onions. Well, I know it isn't one of your favorites, but liver was on sale. Turn it off. All right, but I'm going to eat it. No, you're not. Neither one of us are. Dick, what is it now? You've been drinking. Two drinks and I'm drunk, huh? I didn't say that. But when you drink, it means something's happened. What is it this time? I made up my mind. Oh, you mean you're going to take a job? Yeah, yeah. Oh, darling. Well, you haven't heard it all yet. I don't need to hear any more. Listen, I I know I haven't been the model American husband. Oh, dear. Nobody ever voted me the guy most likely to become a millionaire. But, honey, well, I didn't always get the breaks, you know. No, of course not. You need to get a certain amount of... Momentum to... Ah, why kid anybody? It's been my fault. No, it hasn't, darling. Mm-mm. You've tried in your own way. Don't keep it up. Everybody thinks I'm a sponge or a deadbeat. You told me they did. They don't know you like I do. Nobody believes in me. There's no reason why they should. I believe in you. Do you really? Yes, darling. Yes. Say it again. I believe in you. How much? As much as anybody could. More. Would you believe in me in Chicago and Milwaukee or in San Francisco? Anywhere. Anywhere in the world. All right, then we're going. Going? Where? San Francisco. But uh, my, my From job. From now on, I'm doing the work for this family. Well, how can we Look, pick Look, I've right got up the money here. Look at it. Dick. How much is this you have? Where'd you get it? Never mind, never mind. Look, I got it and it belongs to me. Take half of it. Go ahead, take it. Well, all right, but I... I now, look, go down to Grand well, Central and buy two Pullman tickets to San Francisco on the 9 o'clock train. Well, I'll have to pack. Did you rob a bank? Don't bother, something? don't bother. Buy what you need downtown. It'll give you something to do. From now on, we forget this stinking place and start over from the bottom up. New clothes, new landlords, jobs, new friends and new enemies. Dick Payne will show them. Yeah, I'll show them all what I can do. Well, why do you want me to go alone to the station? Why aren't you coming? I got business to do first. I'm going to pay off all my debts, everybody I owe. How do you like that? Oh, it's wonderful, Dick. But honestly, now, where did you get that? Skip the questions. It's my dough. I work for it. Satisfy you? Well. Now, listen. You get reservations at Grand Central and get on the train. It stops at 125th Street. I'll be busy uptown, so I'll get on at 125th. You got it? 125th Street Station. Right. Yeah. And when that train pulls out of that station, the guy sitting next to you is going to be me. And we'll be heading for a new life, baby. A new life. If she knew what was really on my mind, she'd never have left. I couldn't risk hanging around 42nd Street, showing up at Grand Central with all its bright lights and its cops. I had to hide in some uptown dive where nobody would find me and then sneak on the train to 125th Street. But it got only about three bulbs and no cops. I stood at the window and watched across the street. That's when I noticed this guy. A guy standing on the other side of the street looking up right at the apartment. Big, bulky, with policeman-type shoes. I jumped back from the window as he started across the street. I pulled my gun out to see if it was loaded. I heard him. I heard him coming up the stairs. There was nothing to do but wait for him. What do you want? You're Richard Payne? No, Anderson's my name. 
Isn't this apartment 12? Yeah, it is. I moved in this morning. Paid moved out yesterday. Oh, now, wait a minute. You fit the description I got until I find out better you're the man I want. Look, I tell you that we got this... a little business, you and I, and I look, don't know... I reached out hey, and I jerked him off his feet into the room. Idea. I knew they'd uh, find me, but I didn't think it would be this quick. All right, he was out. big and I... He knew how to handle himself, but I swung the butt of my gun against... The side of his head and he went limp. I held him up against the door. I didn't want to touch him, but I thought maybe I could find something in his pockets that would tell me how they knew about me. He didn't have a gun or a badge, only a piece of paper. He was a bailer from the city hall. <laughs> He's come to Evictus. Evictus, and I'd killed him. I wasn't a killer. It was this momentum. Everybody I met. Three people in three hours. Hello, Out of my way. What are you doing with a gun? Out of my way. You're crazy. Mr. Payne, what's the matter? Move that baby carriage. Get out of my way. Don't point that gun at me. Move it. Stop. I said Please. move it. Please. 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 somewhere in my back, up high. I don't know where exactly the pain was everywhere at once, and for a moment everything stopped working. I grabbed the edge of a building and saw a long alley wavering in front of my eyes. It was a long, dark alley. There was a light at the other end. I got my breath and started towards that bright spot. I knew the whole neighborhood would be after me. Besides everything else, now I'd been shooting at cops. The light at the other end turned out to be a milk truck without a driver. All of a sudden, nobody had to tell me what to do. I got in, I drove off. I left the truck somewhere on 127th Street or someplace, I don't know where, a block or two from here. The toughest thing of all was climbing the stairs to get up here to the station. Three flights of stairs, a step at a time, and like my head would fall off from pain every time I took a step. No, uh, just a minute. Oh, hello. Hey, you sick, mister? Where, where did the Pullman stop? Oh, the Pullman's always stop up front by the second light. Uh. What time does the Chicago train come in? Oh, they just arrive, leave a Grand Central, 11 or 50 o'clock, arrive here 12 midnight under the hut. Eight years I sweep up the platform, always on the time. You, you gonna catch? Yeah. My, my where's your bags? My wife got on at Grand Central with the luggage. I, I'm meeting her. We're, we're going places, boy. Oh. That's nice. So where you going? In Chicago, Kansas City? As far as it'll take me, west. Oh, San Francisco. That's a nice town. Uh, when you get there, what are you going to do? I got a job there. Uh, that's a good. Well, maybe someday I take a train to San Francisco. Now I got a job here, sweeping, sweeping. Hey, listen. She yeah. just come out of the tunnel. It's on the time. Good. That's a pretty, huh? Good. Except when the train comes at night. When I work, it's always quiet up here. Yeah. I just brush the dirt off of the side. Down she goes, 45 feet down to the street where the dots belong. Uh, uh, mister, huh? uh, please move the foot so I sweep where you stand. Huh? Sure, sure. Uh, thanks, thanks a lot. I sweep just... It... Hey, what's this? Huh? Your nose don't bleed, but there's a fresh blood drip on the platform. Blood. Hey, what's your name? None of your business. Just a minute. More blood. I don't like this. Now I know why you don't tell me your name. You shame. Maybe you the same fellow shoot a policeman tonight. All right, huh? turn around. Oh, you got to go. Turn around, I said. What are you going to do? Don't you worry. What do you think? Get out of it. Oh, Yeah, help me up the steps, Thank please. You. Thanks. Oh. 
What's the matter with that fellow? He looks so funny. Dick, oh, here I am. You were going right past me. Pauline, the lights were flickering. I, I couldn't see. Dick, I couldn't what's wrong? See. Just tired, terribly tired. I kept my word and met you, but I'm so tired. I... Dick, you're hurt. Take care of me, Pauline. Don't, don't let them get to me. Don't let... Who? What is it, dearest? Who are they? Hold me. Hold me, Pauline. Oh, darling. What did you do? It wasn't my fault. I went to get the money from Burroughs. The money you owed me, I killed him. Oh, no. And everything oh, no, went wrong. no. Everything. All those people. But I had to get that money. I had to get that money for us. Oh, Dick, no, no, no. I had to. What? I got off work early and went to see Mr. Burroughs. He gave me $200. He said when you came by, he'd have you sign a release for it. Oh. Friends, presented by Autolite. Tonight's star, Victor Mature. Mr. Mature, that was a top performance. Oh, well, thanks a lot. Do you know uh, something else that gives a top performance? Well, you're probably going to say Autolite resistor spark plugs, huh? Vic, you're right with Autolite. Harlow, I would have been very much surprised if you'd said anything else. Why, sure. Autolite resistor spark plugs with the exclusive built-in 10,000 ohm Autolite resistor permit a wide gap setting, giving top spark plug performance. Top performers, too, are the more than 400 other products made by Autolite for cars, trucks, planes, and boats in 28 Autolite plants coast to coast. They include complete electrical systems for many of America's finest cars. Spark plugs, batteries, starting motors, generators, coils, distributors. All engineered by Autolite to fit together perfectly, work together perfectly, because they're a perfect team. So, friends, don't accept electrical parts that are supposed to be as good... Insist on and get Autolite, original factory parts at your service station, car dealer, garage, or repair shop. Remember, you're always right with Autolite. <music> Next Thursday for Suspense, Red Skelton will be our star. The play is called The Search for Isabel, and it is, as we say... A tale well calculated to keep you in... Suspense! Tonight's Suspense play was produced and edited by William Spear and directed by Norman MacDonald. Music for Suspense is composed by Lucian Morawack and conducted by Lud Gluskin. Momentum is a Cornell Woolrich story adapted for radio by E. Jack Newman. Victor Mature appeared through the courtesy of 20th Century Fox, producers of the Technicolor production, Oh, You Beautiful Doll. In the coming weeks, you will hear such stars as Van Heflin, Lucille Ball, and Desi Arnaz. By the way, Lorene Tuttle tonight was Pauline. And now, don't forget, next Thursday, same time, Autolite will present Suspense, starring Red Skelton. You can buy Autolite resistor spark plugs, Autolite stay-full batteries, Autolite electrical parts at your neighborhood Autolite dealers. Switch to Autolite. Good night. This is National Safety Congress Week. The Electric Autolite Company, which received the National Safety Council's Public Interest Award this year, urges you to do your part to promote safety on the highway, in the home, and on the job. Drive slowly. Death and danger travel in fast company. And remember to be careful wherever you are. The life you save may be your own. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.